Good day. Does your dog have a nickname? <laughs> if your dog's behaviour keeps you inventing new nicknames, remember this name. Barkbusters, the world's most trusted dog trainers. They'll transform your dog into a happy, obedient companion in just two hours in your home and provide a lifetime guarantee. Rate your dog's behaviour at BarkBusters.com. BarkBusters, training dogs the Aussie way. Coverage you can count on. This is News Channel 8's Good Morning Connecticut. You winterize your home and your car, so why not your pet, your dog? Barkbusters, the world's largest dog training company, is reminding dog owners to take special precautions to protect your dog from the elements. Here now with more on how you can winterize your pooch. Barkbuster trainers Richard and Vicki Har was their dog Webster. Uh, nice to have all three of you Good back day. on the show. And, and you, know, you don't think about this. You got to take care of your house. You got to get ready. Got to get your car ready for your winter. But but your pets, you know, who are going to spend probably more time outside than they like to, you got to get them ready. Correct. Yeah. What's uh, what's the number one thing in terms of uh, dangers with the with the winter? Is it the cold weather? Um, I think it's frostbite. Mm -hmm. um, I think what you have to be careful of is the size of your dog. Mm -hmm. If you have a dog that's um, small, short hair, like chihuahuas and greyhounds, they mm -hmm. have to be sure that they have on a sweater, right. like we have Webster wearing, mm -hmm. um, because they get chilled very easily, sure. and even below 40 degrees is actually too cold for mm -hmm. them. Um, other dogs typically um, can do better with that and can be out for short periods of time. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, there's also... Go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, when you say short period of time, what are we talking here? Because obviously the long walks in the park are, are, are done for a while now, right? Right. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, if it's a, if it's a um, dog that has a lot more hair, a bigger dog um, with fur, then they can be out at 40 degrees for extended periods of time as long as you provide them with some shelter mm -hmm. that, too, that they can go into. But for any dog that's older, arthritic, or as well as any dog that is small in weight, they can't be out for very short periods of time. Okay, so we talked about the cold temperature. Temperatures. You want to watch for signs of frostbite and injury, don't you? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's very important. Uh, when you bring your dog in, you should always wipe off their paws. Mm -hmm. Towel always works out well. If you've seen that they have uh, any discoloration of their skin, uh, put it in warm water, contact the vet. Mm -hmm. Let's talk poisoning, because I think this is, uh, when, when I walked over here to do this, I saw this was hands down, I think, the most important one of them all. And that's antifreeze. Right. Uh, you know, obviously your pets are, are think, aren't going to know that that's not good stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. with, with antifreeze, you have to be careful of spilling it. Dogs find it very attractive, the smell of it, and they go and lick it, and it mm -hmm. is, can be toxic. And that's it, yeah. So you have to clean up spills. You actually have to be careful. You don't even keep the bottle around mm -hmm. um, anywhere that they can access the containers. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that they can have access to that as well. Okay. Obviously, you know, you talk about uh, with, the, with the weather being cold outside. If, if you have a pet that normally stays out for, for the evening or for the long period, we're done with that. that, that that's a no-brainer, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in terms of uh, protective shelter, though, I would imagine uh, you, you have to at least if, you, if Fido has a doghouse outside, I mean, you, do you want to winterize that as well? Yeah, you want to keep it off the ground mm -hmm. so that it's not directly on the ground or the concrete. Put a blanket on, on mm -hmm. the floor or straw and change it, you know, on a regular basis, especially if mm -hmm. it gets wet. Sure. And the last tip, uh, supply fresh water and food. That's a no-brainer as well. <laughs> well, the important thing with water is uh -huh. don't use a metal ball. Really? If they're, if they're outside and use a metal ball, cold, their tongue could stick to it. There you go. So go with a plastic. Plastic you ball. don't think about that. We also have uh, the reason we brought your pet with us is because there are exercises that you can do with your, your dog to get them kind of acclimated outside, right? Yes. And what, what Well, those one of the things also is the fact that because you're inside a lot, mm -hmm. you should continue training. Okay. Sit, stay, things like that. Okay. Um, even walking your dog in the house is okay. Really? Yeah. Put, put Webster to work. Don't Are we Webster. doing anything different in terms of uh, how we would play with the dog, or is it just more of it and because it's inside? More of it and just be consistent inside. Webster, sit. Good sitting. Good boy. Webster, stay. And just keep practicing in the mm -hmm. house so they don't lose the basics. Come. 
Good boy. There you go. Good boy. Webster's yeah. been trained for yeah. television. And then even heel. You can walk uh -huh. with them in the house. Webster heel. Good heel. And you want to do this on, on, on the leash as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Even you're in yeah. when, you, when you're exercising your dog, whether it's on leash or doing Webster's different sit. skills, it's giving them mental Webster's exercise, stand. so it's fatiguing them. The other thing you want to do is you want to have appropriate toys that uh -huh. stimulate them, like sure. the mustard cube, which when they drops out food and it turns it different directions, it, it stimulates their minds there to, to work, as well as having a Kong. So you want to make sure that they have appropriate toys. And then you have to watch their weight. Sure. Okay. And as far as their weight, you have to be careful of, and that's why we have the three containers of food. If you have a dog that's very active, then you're going to have to give him more food because he's going to be burning off more calories. There if you, you have go. a less active dog to keep them from gaining weight, you're going to give them less food. And as always, all the information online at our website, WTNH.com, if you want more information on Bark Busters. Richard and Vicki Horowitz, thanks for coming in. Webster, nice job as always. <laughs> Free! Just Good boy. He is right. There you go. Now, with coverage you can count on, this is News Channel 8 at Noon. Now, did you know that Halloween is the most dangerous holiday of the year for dogs? And joining us now with some tips on keeping your pooch from having a trick-or-treat freak-out are Richard and Vicki Horowitz from Bark Busters. Thank you both for coming in. Thank Good you. day. Now, who would, have known, who would think that Halloween would be the most dangerous for dogs? Why is it? A lot of stuff that can go wrong, right? Absolutely. It's very dangerous for dogs because it's very unpredictable. Right. People are wearing costumes. They can't recognize people. Yeah. There's lots of new noises out there. And so we have a number of tips that we're going to go over with you to make dogs feel more safe and make it a less stressful holiday for them. All right, let's get to the tips. First, you say don't, and this is Webster, by the way. I'm sorry, Webster. Pardon mm -hmm. me. Uh, you say uh, keep your dogs inside on Halloween, right? That's correct, because you have a lot of people running around outside, a lot of noise, doorbell ringing. So he should be, the dog should be secured in a, uh, a separate room, ideally, or on a leash. Or on a leash, that's the other thing. If you can't bring him inside, you should restrain him outside because things could happen that would make him take off, right? Actually, you shouldn't keep the dog outside at all. All right, I'm reading your list here. Just keep them restrained. What does that mean? That means keep them in a room. Keep them in a room. Or, or if you want to have them in the house with you and yeah. be able to greet people, keep them on leash so right. that if you open the door, he won't bolt out the door. Keep a close eye on him. Okay. Right. Also, you say to reassure your dog. What do you mean by that? When you reassure your dog, you're going to go and check on him. If you have him in a separate room, then you're going to check on him and make sure that he's okay because dogs, when they're very stressed, then their behavior changes and therefore they could be destructive, they could just right. get very, you know, barking, and so what you want to do is reassure them by going and checking on them. And just give them the, oh, everything's going to be fine, right? Exactly. Is that what we're talking about? Okay. You say also check your dog's ID, right? If the dog ever did escape from the house, yeah. want to make sure that his tags are on so they could be identified. Okay. Always a good idea. We're having or not, right? Yeah. Keep candy away from the dog. This is an important one, right? Very important because chocolate is toxic. Yeah. for dogs and people what happens is children come in the house and they start opening up their candy and sure. laying it out on the table or dropping candy so you just want to make sure that any candy is not accessible to dogs um, even the wrappers because sometimes there's little bits of candy on those wrappers and they can get to those as well good and you also say keep your dog safe from candles and, and jack-o-lanterns right right because if you have a candle in the pumpkin and the dog happens to walk by and knocks it over, yeah. could result in a fire. Could be trouble. All right, and think twice about dressing dogs in costumes. Now, this is touchy because a lot of folks love to dress their Absolutely. dogs in costumes. You need to be careful why. Some dogs like it and some don't. Webster is a very timid dog, does not like a costume. He will allow a bandana, but that's the extent of it. Yeah, and some dogs don't like it. They fight it, but uh, you have to meet in the middle with your dog. That's yes. correct. Okay, and you also say, I have fun, but think about the dog's safety on that night, right? Yes, right. yes. The other thing is that to be careful of the masks and things. The dogs, if you decide to dress up at Halloween time, your dog may not recognize you as well if even you're wearing a costume. So it's very important that you're cognizant of the fact that dogs recognize you when you are you, but not when you start changing how you look. Can be a scary night for a dog. Just got to think a little bit about your pooch, right? Right. Absolutely. Well, have fun and be safe. And be safe. Good advice. We've got more tips uh, on our website. We'll link you to their website. We're at WTNH.com. Richard and Vicki Horowitz from Barkbusters and Webster. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Happy Halloween. Nice to Happy see you. Halloween. Put her there. And I'll get Webster one too, huh? Oh, yeah. There we go. All right, we're going to be back with more news in just a moment.